to W-A-T-E-R News. I'm Craig Carpeting, your anchor for everything wet. Today's news feature, Invasion of the Great Lakes. We go live to Max Trout on scene at Lake Ontario. Max? Thanks, Craig. I'm here on scene at Lake Ontario, and the weather's looking good. There is no sign of the horrible invasion below the surface. It all began hundreds of miles from here in the North Atlantic Ocean, Mediterranean, Baltic, and Adriatic Seas. North Atlantic Ocean, Mediterranean Sea, Baltic Sea, Adriatic Sea. Organisms we are talking about are part of those ocean ecosystems, so there is no problem there. However, when they traveled down the St. Lawrence River into Lake Ontario, the horrors began. The creatures were trapped in Lake Ontario for many years, until improvements to the Welland Canal allowed them to travel to Lake Erie and the remaining Great Lakes. What is this creature? A sea lamprey, a horrible eel-like creature with a round chainsaw-like mouth. To learn more, let's go to our expert, Dr. Ron Gobi. Thank you for having me here today. It all begins when the mother sea lamprey lays her eggs under the sand and rock. A larva sea lamprey hatches from the egg, then squirms its way out of the sand and begins its life as a sea lamprey. During this transition stage, the sea lamprey gains eyes and a round mouth. Now it begins its feeding stage. It latches on to a host fish and sucks its blood, generally killing the fish. It then breeds again and it all begins again. So what's the big deal about this sea lamprey? Well, Craig, each sea lamprey eats about 40 pounds of fish and there could be about 20,000 in just one river. So, 800,000 pounds of fish would be eaten by just the lamprey in that one river. Now imagine all the water we have in our Great Lakes. Every time, every year, many, many, many fish die from sea lamprey. Sea lamprey prefer to feed on salmon, lake trout, and lake sturgeon. We humans like to eat these species and have fewer left to eat, thanks to the lamprey. Humans are not the only ones to be affected by this. Check out this web. Before invasive species impacted the Great Lakes, there was an ecosystem with sustainable populations. The sun provided the algae with energy that it could use to create food. Small organisms like the mayfly larva ate the algae. Fish like the yellow perch ate the mayfly, and large fish like salmon and trout were at the top of the food chain. Now that invasive species like the sea lamprey, carp, round goby, and zebra mussels inhabit the ecosystems, the populations have changed. The sea lamprey attacked the larger fish species like the rainbow trout. Now that the large fish species have gone down, the smaller fish species started to rise and the whole ecosystem is set off balance. Some species were not able to survive these changes and reduce the biodiversity in this ecosystem. Breaking news! A large crowd of angry fishermen is forming over at Lake Ontario. Max, what's happening out there? I'm here at Lake Ontario, oh, and there is a large crowd of fishermen. They seem to be very angry. I'm nitfish. I am very angry. I'm protesting against the sea lamprey. They're destroying fish sales. I haven't seen a good trout in five years. And I can't stand it. Those evil sea lamprey are latching on to fish and killing them. Oh, good reporting. We need to get the story from all sides. Let's talk to Larry Lamprey. Larry? Why do your people keep trying to get rid of us? We never tried to get rid of you. And you humans are parasites too. You feed off the whole earth. We are just trying to do what we do best. Eat fish and survive. And we are awfully cute. Look at my two friends. All I do is eat a few fish. There are lots of fish in these lakes. 
Wait a minute, Larry. It might seem like there are a lot of fish in, the, in these lakes, but you sea lamprey do a lot of damage. Because of the sea lamprey, along with water pollution and overfishing, there was a collapse in the commercial fishing industry of the Great Lakes between 1940 and 1950. The lamprey also caused, helped cause the loss of three fish species from the Great Lakes, the longjaw cisco, the deep water cisco, and the blackfin cisco. In the 1940s, a fish called the alewife came to the Great Lakes from the St. Lawrence River. There were no large predators because the sea lamprey had killed them all, so the alewife species skyrocketed, changing the Great Lakes environment even more. All of this affected the biodiversity of the lakes. Biodiversity? What is that? Biodiversity is the variety of all living things that build up an ecosystem. When biodiversity is decreased, the whole ecosystem is impacted. Just like the sea lamprey decreases the fish population and impacts the whole Great Lakes ecosystem. Yikes! How can we help? We are doing many things to help the situation. Scientists use a special pesticide called lampicide that kills them during their larval stage. People use traps and barriers to stop the sea lamprey from traveling upstream to breeding grounds. They even sterilize some of the males and release them back into the ecosystem to breed with females so the females don't reproduce. Wow! Now Max is going to tell us about his idea to help control the sea lamprey. Did you know that sea lampreys are eaten as a delicacy in Europe and Asia? Maybe if people ate them here, the population would reduce. Lamprey sushi, anyone? How about some yummy lamprey soup? Had to be careful for some lamprey stuffed for Lena, or some lamprey stew. Maybe you will be the one who saves the Great Lakes from this invasion. And that about wraps up our show. But first, a word from our sponsors. Our news is brought to you by Biodiversity. Maintaining diversity is critical for the health of the planet. When sea lamprey destroy a species, the whole ecosystem is set off balance, such as the long jaw cisco. This is a message from our sponsors.